Life on Mars is not just in science fiction. NASA's Curiosity rover recorded a burst of methane that lasted at least two months and signals the possible existence of water and therefore life. Elon Musk, the billionaire behind Tesla and SpaceX, said humans should colonize the planet. He's made his ambitions public, saying he wants to help put a man on Mars in the next decade. Steve Durbinson is a believer as well. He is on the boards of SpaceX and Tesla. He is a partner at Draper Fisher Jervinson. So Steve, we're so glad to have you. I know you went to space camp as a kid, but backing Musk with some serious cash is a pursuit. What do you need to get as a return on investment? Well, that's a great question. Um, SpaceX has been one of our most spectacular investments to date, as has Planet Labs and other space investments we're making, in that they not only change the world and help us explore other planets, but they're actually great businesses. In the case of SpaceX, they have over $7.5 billion of revenue on their backlog. So it's not, uh, I guess, it's no, no small potatoes in the meantime. And I think it's kind of breathtaking to be on a mission to literally make life a, and make humanity a multi-planetary species, to bring us not just to Mars once, but to set up a permanent base there and have millions of humans on Mars. That is the ambition and goal of SpaceX, and we are enthusiastic supporters of that. Well, speaking of supporters, one of Elon Musk's co-founders at PayPal was on with us, Max Levchkin, and he said that one of the geniuses of Elon Musk is not only that he has this vision, but through his leadership can really inspire others to join him. Here's what Max told us. I think the great success that is SpaceX is fundamentally rooted in Elon's realization that there's a whole bunch of kids that went out and studied rocket science and came out and said, what do I do now? And Elon said, hey, you come with me. We're going to go to Mars. And that's awesome. That's a great story. And you know, some, some believe it and some don't believe it still. But it energized a whole class of people with astrophysics degrees. So that just underlines the point of you're supporting innovation and maybe the dollars come and I hear you say they're coming in a shorter time than I think they are, but that's why you have your job. I want to ask you though about deterrence. Well, let me say, if I may, Max is exactly course. right. They, they can hire the best and the brightest and there's this enormous poster of Mars that everyone sees when they walk into SpaceX and they do get the best grads. The Mars business cases in the future, the current business is launching satellites into orbit and bringing cargo to the space station. That's where the seven and a half billion comes from. So it's completely separate from Mars. It's the it's the path to Mars, developing those capabilities that pays the bills. All right, I'm glad I'm glad to have those stats in context. I want to mm -hmm. ask you though about the risk because Sir Richard Branson is another champion of space exploration, space tourism, mm -hmm. and during a test flight of Virgin Galactic in the California desert, a pilot died. How does the investment community respond to that, and how do the engineers respond to that? And that's a great question. I think both the engineers and the investment community's sympathy and heart goes out to the test pilots who put their lives on the line to help advance the science. If you think back, if we didn't have test pilots risking their lives, we wouldn't have the advances in aviation that we have today, the way everything from commercial to uh, military jets. This is a long history within that community. And so this is somewhat in that vein. And, you know, and we have our sympathies to them. But one thing to keep in mind for the industry at large is that failure was very idiosyncratic, very unique to the Virgin Galactic design, where they have this enormous feathered fin that comes up in, in the way they do a suborbital launch. It's unique to that vehicle. No other airplane or rocket on Earth uses that mechanism, and that was the mechanism that failed. So while it's tragic, of course, for the test pilot, it's not in any way indicative of, a, of an issue at the space industry at large. Okay. Speaking of industries, I want to shift a little bit and look to robotics, because I know you invest sure. as well in a lot of robotics projects. So what will we do with robots or probably more precisely, what will robots do with us in five years that the average person doesn't know about yet? Sure. Well, within five years, we'll start to see more and more of the robo uh, robotic cars or the autonomous vehicles that you see from companies like Google. There's some other startups. There's a lot of the large automotive companies making advances where it'll both be intelligent autopilot on the highway where it just does everything, the steering, the braking, the driving, and smart parking and urban driving, services like Uber, but fully automated where there's no, you know, no steering wheel, no person driving you around in an urban environment. That should all start to roll out in five years and have a pretty big 
impact on mobility and urban planning and a variety of things in our lives. In the industrial setting, there'll be a whole new wave of robots from companies like Rethink that are humanoid-like robots with arms. They don't have the legs yet, but they're doing anything a sedentary human could do, sitting at a really mindless job all day, putting widgets in a box or soldering something over and over and over again. And that is increasingly flowing into factories around the world in China and the U.S. that won't be something the consumer sees directly, but we'll see the benefits of that yet another advance in the lower cost manufacturing and mass producibility of objects from cell phones to you name it. The latest so essentially visual. we're moving yeah. more and more into yeah. this kind of thinking economy mm -hmm. and as people call it the rise of the creative class because all the manual jobs will be done it sounds like from, from your point of view eventually. by robots. Yeah, not in five years but eventually all physical labor should be more easily done by a robot which is a profound future but that future is probably only 50 to 500 years out and it's going to be within the predictive lifespan of people today to say like that's going to be a brave new world. Indeed it will be. I want to ask you because you mentioned these self-driving vehicles. Do you see them more as consumers purchasing them or as public transport systems investing and using them? For a variety of reasons, both regulatory and business model related, they will probably start as a service where they aren't being sold the full autonomous car, like the Uber-like service will be a service. Someone will, like Google openly, will be providing this as a capability rather than selling the vehicles right out of the chute to people. The same thing happened in the early days of electric cars. Just for sort of playing it safe, they don't give the vehicles fully to people at first. They, they run them as a service. All right, Steve, we thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Great to have you with us, Steve Jervidson joining us there. He is, of course, the partner at Draper Fisher Jervidson.